Hello and welcome to Skyscraper 2020. We are thrilled to have you here in Varon Vehicles Virtual Summit. I want to extend a message of solidarity to all of those undergoing hardship in these moments of global pandemic. These are definitely very challenging times. But we are in front of an opportunity of a lifetime to be part of the creation of a new aviation. Just like in the early 1900s, in the golden age of the automobile, the golden age of aviation, well, we have that same opportunity now. Because of these enabling technologies that are allowing us to dream about these new futuristic modes of mobility to be able to actually exist, we have the opportunity now to create that new type of aviation, that new type of mobility. Hello everybody, my name is Felipe Varon and I'm the founder and CEO of Varon Vehicles. We're very excited to open this virtual summit to all of you. Here you will find a lot of very interesting content that we have worked very hard to put together with all our ecosystem participants for you for you to be inspired, for you to see our vision about how we see this new type of mobility actually happening in our real cities. We want you to be inspired, not only by our same dream, by our vision, but by the real possibility of actual implementation. And we've done a very hard work uh, with our ecosystem participants, a whole set of very, very capable companies and individuals to lay out for you content that shows how we intend to actually achieve that, how we intend to overcome barriers that have become very apparent. So we want you to be inspired. We want you to uh, have all the time available to absorb this content that is right here in Skyscraper 2020 for you. So let me tell you a bit about the format of our virtual summit. Here you will find companies' presentations, you will find interviews, you will be able to see our think tanks, and you'll be able to come back and visit all this content whenever you want. There's no scheduling, there's no specific time. All this content will be available for you right here permanently. Also, you'll be able to interact with all presenters all the way until December 15th of 2020. So we encourage you to engage. We encourage you to ask your questions, to send us your comments and interact with all the presenters here in Skyscraper 2020. I want to tell you a bit about our vision, Varon Vehicles Vision of Urban Air Mobility. This is about a new type of infrastructure. In reality, this may not even be about aviation necessarily. It's about a new form of infrastructure. Just as there are rail systems, road systems, metro systems, for example, in our cities that allow connectivity to happen, that allow cities to grow, we are creating a new way of mobility infrastructure. We see urban air mobility just as that, a new type of infrastructure. But it's a very different type of infrastructure simply because it does not require any physical construction other than our vertiports. Of course, we will have vehicles. In our case, we're talking about vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. And these aircrafts are a new generation of air vehicles that will very probably allow us to disrupt the types of mobility infrastructure that existed all the way to this moment in history because the infrastructure that we require to connect points 
and connect parts of the cities and suburbs are no longer required to be physical. There's no need to build any roads. There's no need to build any rail systems to connect all these parts of cities and suburbs through and using urban air mobility. All we need is to place vertiports in these different parts of our cities and the surroundings. And then we will have connection. We will have accessibility that didn't exist before. So that's why we're talking about a disruptive type of infrastructure. There are a numerous amount of barriers and challenges. For example, choosing very appropriately where to place our vertiports. That has to be done in a very smart way in order to allow correct connectivity between origin and destination. There's challenges on the energy source. We do intend our vehicles to eventually be electric. But that poses a very, very strong question about the source of the energy in the first place. These vehicles will be consuming tremendous amounts of energy to be able to fly. So how are we going to charge these batteries in the first place? Where's the energy going to come from? And how is that energy going to be generated in the first place? We are talking about a, a relatively high level of power required. So that question is a very relevant question when it comes to the impact that we intend to have on the environment. We intend to have the most positive impact overall on the environment. And that's why that question is so critically important. Probably one of the two biggest challenges uh, on urban air mobility is the social and the community acceptance that we need to create and the new regulations that we need to write together with the regulators to be able to allow this new system to operate. So touching briefly on those two points, public acceptance is really important because we will be occupying the low altitude airspace over the cities. And that means that this new type of mobility will need to fly over communities. We will need that occupation to be as friendly as possible. So our vehicles will need to be as invisible as possible. That means that we will need to have the least amount of density of air vehicles at any given moment in time in the air. That means that we will need to have vehicles that are as silent as possible in order to affect communities in the least manner possible. We need our vehicles uh, sound signature to blend with the background in order for them to be basically unnoticeable. We need to be friendly in terms of the fear barrier that we understand exists for users and non-users as well. We need to look at the comfort, the acceptance, the willingness of people to actually board our aircraft and feel comfortable in terms of the um, altitude that we will be flying at, in terms of the speed that we'll be flying at, and also in terms of the comfort on board our aircraft. And there's challenges as well on the regulation side. We need to work together with aeronautics regulators to create the new regulations that are required to be able to occupy airspace that is currently not being used, to be able to integrate seamlessly and especially safely with existing and traditional aeronautics. In Varun Vehicles, we have a vision of starting very slow, of having a very gradual implementation. And in terms of regulation, that means starting in a very confined manner, confined to airspace that is not currently being occupied 
by traditional aircraft. By starting in airspaces that are very controlled by the local aeronautics authority, that are confined and segregated so that no other aircraft will mix with urban air mobility at first. And in that way, we can grow. We can start adding complexity and walking that path of this new type of aviation and mobility. Working together with aeronautics authorities, with civil aviation authorities, is critically important for Varon vehicles. That is why we are working hand in hand with those authorities in both the design of our airspace integration architecture and in the creation of the new regulations that are required for our systems to operate. We're very happy to have an ecosystem of very world-renowned companies and individuals participating together with us in that path. We are thrilled, excited, and honored to have these companies as part of our ecosystem. And we feel very challenged to be leading this ecosystem in Latin America. But we know the need. We know about the necessity of providing a radically new way of mobility, a radically new way of mobility infrastructure. So we are challenged and we are driven towards that future that we can achieve right now in our lifetimes. We don't need for a uh, number of decades to pass to be able to see urban air mobility happening. Actually, we already know that these vehicles can exist. They can be manufactured. We see things like flying tubs already flying around. But you see, it's not about the air vehicles, really. Air vehicles are very challenging and are, are an integral part of our systems. But the challenge is really on those two main fronts, public acceptance and regulations. Once we overcome and are able to achieve public acceptance, and once we are able to continue the path that we have already begun with the regulators to create both those safe airspaces to operate in and those new regulations, those new parameters to create the, the, the lines of operation, to, to uh, define the ways how we must operate, well then, then we can think about placing into operation and into service at last, at long last, the new type of urban air mobility. And it is then that new doors will open for urban air mobility. And as we see urban air mobility, not as aviation necessarily, but as infrastructure, it is then that we start understanding the value of this new industry. Urban air mobility is not about air taxis. Air taxis are definitely a very interesting business case, but one of many business applications for urban air mobility. When we see urban air mobility as infrastructure, we understand the urban problems that we can start tackling. We understand the traffic problem that we can start providing a solution for. We understand the accessibility problem in cities that we can start providing a solution for. We understand city and urban economic problems and economic differences, social differences, that we can start providing a solution for by providing just a bit more equality, just a bit more accessibility to different parts of our urban structures. We understand this city growth problem that we can start providing a solution for to alleviate the traffic problem, 
to alleviate the need for growth in cities. We understand the environmental problem, how 30% of all greenhouse gas emissions in the planet actually come from vehicles, from mobility, that use internal combustion engines, and how we can start providing a solution to that as well by having a different type, a new type of mobility infrastructure that uses much more efficient vehicles, faster, hopefully in a much more economically efficient way as well, and definitely that replaces these land vehicles that use internal combustion engines and fossil fuels. So you see, it's not really about aviation. It's about how aviation can provide a solution to urban problems, to city problems, to people like you, like me. And how we can use that new type of aviation to provide a better quality of life to all of us. So the vision that we have in Varun Vehicles is to build that new type of infrastructure. And that's why we call our systems infrastructure networks. Our infrastructure networks are a collection of vertiports in a city and its surroundings and its suburbs connected to each other via virtual lanes over the low altitude airspace of our cities and a fleet of air vehicles servicing between those vertiports. That's what we call our infrastructure networks. And with those, we'll definitely be able to tackle those many problems, those city problems, those urban needs, to provide a solution to them, a new way to look at mobility. So in order for that to happen, in order for that type of urban mobility to be achievable, there's a whole host of different systems that need to be in operation. Our systems are definitely a system of systems, complex systems that require high levels of automation in order not only to be able to operate, but to be scalable. And scalability is very, very important. Only through scalability, we will be able to achieve the economic efficiency to be able to reach more and more people, to provide services to more and more parts of our communities. So these high levels of automation are only achievable with today's technologies. That's why we are in front of an opportunity of a lifetime, a new golden age in aviation and mobility, because it's today's technologies that are allowing that to happen, which we're not able just a few years ago. Urban air mobility has existed for many, many decades. Air vehicles like the helicopter have been around for many decades. But traditional aircraft are very complex. There's a lot of mechanical complexity in helicopters. There's a lot of systems inside a helicopter that make it tremendously difficult to build, to operate, and to maintain. And those three things reflect in the end cost of the service. This new type of aviation basically does away with many of those complexities and turns them into software complexities. The new type of vertical takeoff and landing and eventually electric VTOL air vehicles are highly simplistic. They don't have that mechanical complexity of traditional helicopters, of traditional airplanes. They don't have such complex hydraulic systems, power systems, maybe turbine systems as well. Rather, they turn all those 
into software complexities inside flight computers that do the work and control the air vehicles via electric systems, essentially electric motors. So in the end, having less mechanical complexities, hydraulic complexities and such, make the air vehicles not only safer, but quieter, and also more economically efficient. eVTOLs are easier to build because of that simplicity. They don't have such a high cost for construction. They also don't have such a high cost for operation because of the automation that today's technologies allow and the intrinsic simplicity of these air vehicles, they're easier to operate. So the operators that we're looking at are probably going to have less training and much less cost. And then these air vehicles are also simpler and more economically efficient to maintain, to repair, to overhaul. So construction, operation, and sustainability of the fleets are at long last being able to be seen much simpler, much more economically efficient, and that is allowing at last that we talk about a new era in aviation that really reaches the masses and that actually achieves providing services to many more people and not just to a few. That is the opportunity that we have in front of all of us. I want to thank all the companies, the groups, the teams, the individuals who have worked together with Varon Vehicles in putting together Skyscraper 2020. We definitely have, ha have had a, a, an exciting uh, a number of weeks putting all this material together for all of you, our visitors. And I really want to encourage you again to engage, to give us your opinion, to throw out your questions right here, right here in Skyscraper 2020. But most importantly, to be inspired.